Hello! In today's video, we will be discussing elements, atoms, and atomic structure. First, as a quick review, we'll look at how matter is organized. So we know that matter is the physical substance that makes up everything in our universe. We also know that matter can be divided into pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances being substances that have one consistent chemical makeup and therefore consistent characteristics. Under the category of pure substances, we have compounds, which we'll learn in upcoming lessons, and elements, which we will discuss today. An element is the simplest form of matter. Elements cannot be broken down into any simpler substances. All matter in the universe is made up of a combination of one or more elements. Each element is unique, meaning that it has its own set of characteristics that is different from any other element in the universe. Some examples of elements are gold, silver, helium, oxygen, carbon, all of the known elements in the universe are organized on the periodic table of elements based on their characteristics. We'll talk more about reading the periodic table in a moment. Elements are broken down into small individual units called atoms. These individual units of elements cannot be broken down into any smaller units. Atoms are the building block of matter. Because all matter is made up of elements and atoms are the units of elements, all matter is made up of atoms. So for example, if we look here, if you were to be able to zoom in millions of times into a piece of gold, you would see that the gold is broken up into many, many, many tiny individual units of gold called atoms. Inside of an atom, there are two regions or areas that we need to be familiar with. First is the nucleus. This is the very, very center of the atom. You can see that here. The second region is the outer orbitals. These are the very, very outer rim surrounding the atom. You can see our outer orbitals here. Within these tiny individual units called atoms, there is a specific atomic structure made up of three different types of particles called subatomic particles. Let's look at what those are. First, we'll talk about our protons. Protons are the particles that are positively charged. They have a charge of plus or positive one. These particles have mass and are located inside the nucleus. Here, we can see our protons in the center of the atom in our nucleus. Next, we have electrons. Electrons are negatively charged particles, or have a negative one charge. These particles have what we call no mass. Their mass is so small that we don't actually consider it as part of the mass of the atom. These particles are located in the outer orbitals, constantly rotating and orbiting around the outside of the atom. Finally, we have neutrons. As their name suggests, neutrons have no charge, so we call that neutral. Their charge is zero. These particles also have mass that contributes to the mass of the atom and are also located inside of the nucleus. Here, we can see our neutrons right in the center of our atom. Here is a very helpful sheet that I would recommend copying down into your notebook uh, to help you practice and memorize all of this information about our subatomic particles. Keeping in mind that the things you want to know is the charge of the particle, the location of the particle in the atom, and whether or not the particle has mass that contributes to the mass of the atom. Now we'll talk about how to read our periodic table. So on the periodic table, we have every single known element in the universe organized based on its characteristics. Each element has its own square on the table that gives us some important information about that element. First, we see the element name at the very top. Of course, that's just the name of the element. Next, there is a large one or two letter abbreviation found right at the middle of the square, which is called the element symbol. This is simply a way of shorthand writing or representing the element. Next, 
at the top underneath the name, we see the atomic number. This number identifies the element as well as tells us the number of protons in the nucleus of this atom. Finally, at the very bottom of the square, we have what's called the atomic mass. This number tells us the mass of the atom, which is made up of the neutrons and the protons in the nucleus of the atom. Finally, we'll talk about how we can use a square on the periodic table to determine the subatomic structure of an atom of any given element. Step one is to determine the number of protons. This step is very quick and easy because the atomic number simply tells us the number of protons in the atom. So all I need to do is look at the atomic number and I know the number of protons present. Step two is to determine the number of electrons. The overall charge of any atom needs to be zero. So in order for an overall charge to be zero, I must have an equal number of positively charged particles and negatively charged particles. That tells me that my number of electrons must be exactly equal to my number of protons. Finally, I can determine the number of neutrons. I do this by looking at my atomic mass. First, I need to round that value, and then I will subtract the number of protons from the atomic mass. Formula looks something like this. Number of neutrons is equal to the atomic mass minus the number of protons. Now, let's look at an example of how we can use the periodic table to determine the subatomic structure of an element. So as we can see here, my element is carbon. I know that simply by looking at the element name at the top of the square. Now I'm gonna record my rounded atomic mass because I know I'll need that later. If I look down here, I can see that my mass is 12.011. I know that zero rounds down, so if I need to round this to a whole number, I know that it's going to round to 12. Then I'm gonna record my atomic number, because I also know I'll need that. I look up here at the top of my square and I see my atomic number is six. Now we can get started on determining our subatomic structure. So I know in order to determine my number of protons, I simply need to look at my atomic number. In this case, my atomic number is six, telling me that in an atom of carbon, we have six protons present. Now I can go ahead and add that to my model. So I know that protons are found in the nucleus of the atom. I'm gonna color code them red and I'm going to represent them as protons with a plus sign. Next, I'm going to determine my number of electrons. Remember that the overall charge of the atom must be equal to zero. That means that I must have an equal number of positive and negatively charged particles. That means that my number of electrons must be equal to my number of protons, which is six. Now I'm ready to add my electrons onto my atom model. I know that electrons are found orbiting on the outer orbitals of the atom. And I will show them with a negative sign in order to represent them as electrons. Finally, I need to find my number of neutrons. I know that in order to do this, I need to know my number of protons as well as my atomic mass. Here, I know that my atomic mass is 12, and I know that I need to subtract from that the number of protons, which is six. 12 minus six gives me six, telling me that I have six neutrons in an atom of carbon. And finally, I will go ahead and add my neutrons, which I know are found in the nucleus of the atom. Present my neutrons, and I can either leave them blank, or I may draw a zero to represent them being neutral or with a charge of zero.